Founded by sea captains in 1799, Salem's Peabody Essex Museum is the oldest continuously operated museum in the country. Right behind us, we have a memorial wall where we list the victims of the witch trials in chronological order by death date. In late September, the PEM introduced a new exhibit on the Salem witch trials of 1692. Dan Lipkin is the co-curator. The truth of the crisis is essential to understanding the motivations and the reasons for its happening. About 50 items are on display, including original trial materials, official court documents, and possessions of the people involved. One of the biggest misconceptions is that it was caused by hallucinations because people ate moldy bread. We want to make it clear that this is a very complex crisis but it can't be reduced to a few hallucinations of a few people. By the time it ended, 25 innocent people had been killed. The Salem witch trials date back over 300 years. Why introduce this exhibition now? Injustice and prejudice have been on the minds of a lot of people this year. So it really was an opportune time for us to bring these materials out, talk about why this crisis happened, and tie the events of 1692 to those of 2020. This is the first time some of the materials have been on view since 1992 because they're so light sensitive. One of the key documents in all of this is the death warrant of Bridget Bishop. She was not terribly well liked and a little bit quarrelsome. And I think the attorney general at the time, Thomas Newton, thought that maybe she would be an easy target. Bishop was the first to be put on trial, sentenced to death and hanged. If we understand why it happened, we can take lessons about how to act when we see injustice in our own time. Salem itself seems steadfast in refusing to repeat its past. The reason so many witches flock here is because Salem has become one of the most tolerant cities in the world. Sandra Wright grew up here and still calls it home. I do consider witchcraft my calling, and I have for the vast majority of my life. I became a witch at a very young age. I had visions of things that were going to happen, and then they would come true. Wright says witchcraft empowers her. It's an honor, actually, to be able to do this work. A lot of people really do seek out witches for this wisdom. Wright is also the general manager of Omen Psychic Parlor and Witchcraft Emporium, where she read my tarot cards. We do have a couple of what's called the Major Arcana cards, and those indicate the presence of major changes. The first one that we see in the present position is justice. So the idea of what's fair and the idea of truth is very important right now. It's a time for thinking, but not necessarily overthinking. Wright says it's important to remember that readings aren't predicting a future set in stone. That's one of the most powerful things about this. I'm not reading some definite destiny here. It gives you a chance to review what's happening in your life and really take a look at it and say, am I making the decisions that are bringing me closer to the goals that I have? Am I closer to living my best life? But 2020 certainly hasn't felt the best for so many. We are living in crazy, uncertain times. So I'm asking this question for everyone. Are we going to be OK? Yes, we are going to be OK. Um, we are uniquely qualified to adapt and transform. That's part of our superpower as human beings. This is a chance for us to really examine the decisions that we make, to take a look at our priorities, and try to move forward you know, with more compassion, more care for each other. Salem's centuries-old history also includes a rich role in the spice trade. We were actually known as the Venice of the New World. After the end of the American Revolution, the city's sea captains ventured over to new ports in the Far East. 
When the first load of black pepper and these other goods came back from the Far East, it commanded an astronomical profit. Salem's Elias Derby helped to lead that charge and it paid off. He became the nation's first millionaire. It's exciting because you're really getting to taste the world when you come to a place like this. The city's flair for flavor remains today. Karen Scalia runs Salem Food Tours. One of its stops, Salem Spice, a one-stop shop for more than a hundred different spices. We get so sick of what we're eating because we're not changing our spice profiles. So you can take that pot of chicken and rice or fish and rice, travel the world by just adding different spices and add so much interest to the dish and not add fat and calories. A welcome addition to any kitchen, one of the custom blends here called Positive Thoughts. It's rich, it's hearty. Yes. It's, it's warm. The spice trade history has really had a lasting impact on Salem. A really magical city, more than most people think. <laughs> Now, in an effort to control crowds, the mayor of Salem is telling people not to travel to the city for Halloween this year. But Salem is open all year round. To plan a visit, there's a handy destination Salem app. It's a year round visitor guide that you can access from your phone. It has an event calendar, parking and ticket information. And finally tonight, the secret to delicious apple cider.